Hi, this is Pastor Gab. Thank you for joining us in our online service. We are currently in the book of So please turn your back to 11. We're going to read verse 25 to 27. If you are with me, you can read it out loud. Romans 11, verse 25. Let's begin. Lest you be wise in your own sight. I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. May God be blessed by the reading of His Word. Come with me in prayer. Lord, we thank You for this time that You've given us to study Your Word. I pray that this would be clear to us, that as you reveal your plan, may our hearts be sensitive to what you want, Father. May our eyes be open, open our eyes, Father, that we would see the truth. And Lord, may we move with sensitivity to where you are leading us. May it be your words, not mine, in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's conversation is about God's plan for Israel and the world. This is a very basic question that people ask. What is God's plan? After all that's happening in the world, what is God's plan? You see, some people know the Bible very well, but they misapply it or misquote it. When Paul wrote the book of Romans, there were more Gentiles than Jews in the church. There were more Gentiles than Jews. The, the, the Gentiles, non-Israelites, have outnumbered the Jews already. Now, uh, Paul was writing to Romans, but we can see that today this is still applicable to us. Romans 11 is a summary. Romans 11, verse 25 to 27, is a summary of what has Paul been talking about. Now, in Romans 9, 10, and 11, this is a trilogy, a three-part. Romans 9 talks about Israel, God choosing the nation Israel. Romans 10 is God uh, allowing the Gentiles to partake in His kingdom. And in verse 11 is the future of Israel. And I want you to pay close attention as we go through our conversation today about God's plan for Israel and the world. Paul begins with a question. Has God cast away His people? Romans 11 verse 1. I ask then, has God rejected His people? By no means. He answers it Himself. No, God did not reject His people. God uses Israel for His plan to take place. God has a plan to save mankind. God uses Israel. Israel chose to reject Christ. And so what happened was, it's just logical to us, has God abandoned Israel? Paul answers this, by no means. No, 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 no. God did not abandon Israel. So what's happening? First, blindness is on Israel presently. Blindness is on Israel presently. What do we mean by blindness? Blindness has overtaken them in interpreting Old Testament scripture. They actually have the Old Testament, the Torah, the law, and the prophet. But they do not understand what's, what they are reading. They don't really know what it is about. Turn to 2 Corinthians 3, 14 to 15. 2 Corinthians 3, 14 to 15. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, referring to the Old Testament, that same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their heart. What does this mean? You see, Israel's heart has been hardened by God. Wait, God hardened the heart of Israel? Yes, 
But prior to God hardening their heart, remember that it was Israel who first rejected Christ. They have rejected God over and over and over again. And Paul talks about that in Romans 10. You have to trace it back all the way after the Exodus when, when they left Egypt. Moses was in Mount Sinai. The first thing that Israel does is to worship other gods than God. So you're seeing that there's a pattern that Israel has already forsaken God from the beginning. They just got out of, of Egypt. And all the way to the time of Paul's writing, Israel keeps on hardening their hearts. Now, we went back and we talked about this in Romans 2. What happens when you harden your heart? God's wrath is poured out. What does that mean? It means God allows you to harden your heart. God harden your heart. If you wanna, if you wanna do it your way, God hardens your heart. All right? Because you keep on hardening your heart, fine. God allows you to do so. Now, this is what's happening to Israel. There's a national blindness. There were some Jews who believed, Paul, one of them, but as a nation, they could not see God. Here's an interesting fact about Israel. May 14, 1948, the nation of Israel was recognized at the UN. The Philippines was one of those signatories in uh, in that uh, ruling in UN, that the nation of Israel had been recognized as a nation. All right. Now, in 1948, okay, only 23 Jews believed in Jesus. Come to think of that. 1948, there's a lot of Christians, but when it comes to the Jews who were in Israel at that time, only 23 of them believe. Today, the last census was in 2017. In Israel, only 30,000 Israelites believe that Jesus is the Messiah. This is what it meant when there's a partial hardening of Israel. Imagine people go on a Holy Land tour, but the Israelites did not believe in Jesus. Imagine reading Old Testament, but the Israelite does not believe in Jesus. This is the partial hardening, the blindness that's happening to Israel. And Jesus prophesied that this is going to happen. Turn your Bibles to Luke 19, verse 42 to 44. Luke 19, 42 to 44. Jesus said, saying, would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. What is Jesus saying here? Jesus is giving a prophecy that happened in the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Because you did not believe, your city is going to be torn down. And this is what happened. This is what happened. You can Google it. Battle of Masada. What happened in Jerusalem in 70 AD? The prophecy of Jesus came through because they did not believe in Jesus. Their walls were torn down. They were exiled. Now, this blindness is also what Jesus was saying. Because you did not believe, now I'm going to hide it from you. Because you did not believe the Old Testament prophecy about Jesus, now I'm going to keep it. From you. So this is what's happening to Israel. There's blindness, a national blindness. Only a few Jews could understand who Jesus is. They know Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. They know Jesus in their head, 
They know him as a guy, a wonderful teacher, but they don't know him and they don't acknowledge him as Lord. Blindness in Israel is present, but guess what? God has preserved them. That's why when, when Paul was asked, you say, has God rejected Israel? No, he has preserved Israel even until today. Imagine how many times did Israel get into conflict and people want to wipe out Israel, but guess what? Israel is still standing today. That's because God has protected them. All right. So, will Israel survive in the future? Definitely. God has kept them kept them before, God has kept them now. What do you think is going to happen in the future? God is still going to keep them. So, God didn't just cast them away, but brought them back to their land. And here's the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. You have to go back to Genesis for the prophecy of Abraham. But why is this happening? One of the benefits of Israel rejecting Christ is that we Gentiles are now part of the kingdom. The benefits are given including to the Gentiles. Blindness is on Israel but it bought benefit. All right? It opened the door to the Gentile. Now let's read it again, verse 25. Lest you be wise in your own eyes, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers. A partial hardening has come upon Israel, and take note of this, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. So there's the prophecy here. Israel's heart will be hardened until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. What does that mean? As I said, you have to go back to Genesis 12, verse 3. In Genesis 12, verse 3, God promises Abraham, and he says, I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. And this is the fulfillment in Jesus Christ. Now, here's the thing that's happening. Israel rejected Christ. But because Israel rejected Christ, the prophecy given to Abraham that all the nations of the earth, all the families of the earth will be blessed, is being fulfilled. Take note at what Paul does every time he preaches the gospel in his missionary journey. He would go to the Jews, and when the Jews reject him, he would go to the Gentiles. He would go to the Jews, he would go to the Gentiles. All right? this, is, this is what Paul does every time he goes, uh, every time he goes to preach the gospel. All right? Now, I want you to, to be aware of this. God has not rejected Israel, but at the same time, He has a plan for the Gentiles, the non-Israelites. It was not something like, ha, huh, Israel rejects me, so I'm going here. But rather, it was part of His plan all along. Okay, It was part of God's plan all along. The Gentiles are now beneficiaries of the kingdom of God. Ponder on that. So what does it have to do when you say fullness of the Gentiles? It simply means that God in His sovereignty knows how many non-Jews will actually believe in Jesus. He knows the exact number of Gentiles who would accept and believe the Lord Jesus Christ, who would submit to the Lordship of Christ. And so this is a scary thought. Not everyone is going to believe. And this is a struggle. And there's a struggle with that one. But guess what? You're going to realize that this is, this is something that uh, is a struggle for us. But at the same time, this is good news. Why? 
because it means that Gentiles can be saved. Now, I want you to, to go back to Romans 11, and Paul uh, explains it well in verse 11. So I ask, did they stumble in order that they might fall? By no means. Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Here, why? So as to make Israel jealous. So God has rescued and, and, and placed the Gentiles. Why? So that Israel would be jealous. Now, if their trespass means riches for the world, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? It simply means that, hey, when they rejected, when they rejected Christ, we are beneficiaries. But consider, if they did not reject Christ, if they're really included, what does it mean? We're still part of the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean that we're we're not God doesn't care about us, but we're still part of the kingdom of God. Now, I am speaking to you Gentiles, verse 13. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. So Paul is going to the Gentiles so that the Jews would see what's happening with the plan of God. It continues even if the Jews did not participate in the plan of God. And Paul says, I magnify my ministry so they will come to know who Jesus is. All right. So Paul makes an illustration of what it looks like. He gives an illustration of a, 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 an olive tree, verse 17. The Gentiles were wild olive shoot. All right. Now, here, I want you to pay attention to it in verse 17. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, Gentiles, referring to the Gentiles, although a wild olive shoot were grafted in among the others, and now sharing the nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant towards the branches. If you are, remember that it's not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. So here's the thing. So Paul makes an illustration. A wild olive tree, Gentile, is grafted into an olive tree. What happens? Because some of the branches didn't want, didn't want Christ, they, they took out the branches that are dead, and then you graft a wild olive tree. This uh, agricultural thing, you're going to have to search Google or YouTube, and you're going to be able to find out that, yeah, you can actually do grafting. And there was one project that there's about 40 fruits grafted into a tree. And it's a wonderful sight to behold. But what Paul is saying, Gentiles, don't boast. Don't look at Israel and say, hey, look at you. Because of what you did now, we're going to be saved while you guys are not. Because the plan of God is still in effect. The old non-productive branches were broken because of their blindness the branches of a wild olive tree were grafted giving benefits to the gentiles as well but the root of this is god's covenant with israel god's covenant with israel matthew 21 42 43 this is what's happening jesus said to them have you never read in the scriptures the stone, this is Jesus, that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, the Jews, and given to a people producing its fruit. Why did God take away? Why did God cut off or took away? the branches that are not working and allowed the Gentiles to come in to produce fruit. So God has a plan. You and I who were grafted into His kingdom is to produce fruit. Alright? So we can't, we can't go on and, and say, you know what, those Israelites, you can't be so against the Israelites. But rather, you would have to understand what God has done. 
John 10, 16, And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. So God has really included the Gentiles all along. Now, here's the catch. In verse 25, Paul says, Until the fullness of Gentiles come in. What does this mean? If we are to produce fruits, if we are to produce fruits, there's a time limit. When that number has been completed, then Jesus is going to come back. Then Jesus is going to come back. Where is that? Which leads us to our third point now. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. I struggled with this for the entire week. What does it mean, all Israel? You see, all Israel could not mean all the Jews. Why? Because some of them are dead who did not believe in Christ. But if you go study scripture, all Israel, remember that not all Israelites are true Israelites. Go back to Romans 9. Right? And, and, and Paul said in verse 6, For not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. So what was he saying? When he's talking about Israel, are spiritual Israelites as well as those who believe in Jesus. So there's a number that God has in mind, both Jews and Gentiles. And when this number is completed, then he will come back then he will come back now this is why we need to study the end time so we will understand what is going on that as prophecy is being fulfilled as prophecy is being fulfilled we're actually going nearer and nearer and nearer to the end times where jesus is coming back so this verse should excite us and in verse 26, all Israel will be saved as it is written. The Deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. So here, we're saying that God has a plan. In God's plan, there's a partial blindness that happened to Israel. Gentiles were grafted in, but we're not just grafted in, we're to produce fruit so others will know who Jesus is and surrender to His Lordship, submit to His Lordship, and then Israel will see what's happening. They would come back to Jesus and the end will come. So it's perfectly clear that God has a plan. God has a plan. As you look at Israel, you're looking at your measuring stick. With Israel, you measure time. You can measure when the world was created. You can go back to that. That's why you have BC, AD. Okay? BC, before Christ, AD, Ado Dominus, or after the death of Christ. And you're, you're seeing, hey, you're actually measuring time through the life of a Jew, Israel. All right? By Israel, you measure other nations. You know what? If God did not spare Israel in disciplining them, would He not then not spare other nations? So this is something that you look as a measuring stick. You look at Israel. God dealt with them, and God is going to deal with nations who does not submit to his lordship. So think of that one. All right? Israel worshiped other idols. What happened to them? God punished them. Israel were stiff-necked people. What happened to them? God punished them. So now let's look at our nation. What do you think is going to happen? God gives us chances over and over and over again. What do you think is going to happen if we keep 
on disobeying God. Yet, you're going to see that God, when He calls, there's no such thing as a very hard-hearted person for Him. When He chooses to use that person, He's going to use that person, and that person is going to come back to the kingdom of God. So what lesson can we learn in Romans 11? Let me give you some lessons. We serve a God who knows our failures, who knows our mistakes, just like Israel. All right, Israel's mistakes, failures, but God uses faulty people anyway. So whenever you feel like I'm not qualified, I'm not worthy, think about this. God uses faulty people anyway. When God determines to change and bless a person, He will. You can just look at Israel. So there's no impossible situation with God. So what should we do in response? Now that you know that God has a plan, until the fullness of the Gentile come in, then your job, my job, is very much simple. We preach the gospel. When that person hears the gospel, there's a number of Gentiles that God knows, and then the end will come. So keep on preaching the gospel. Keep on preaching the gospel. God is using us at this point. And Israel is missing it completely, but they will turn. Don't feel bad about Israel or don't talk bad about them. God has chosen them. But in the same manner, God has chosen you and me. So we have to stick to our job. Preach the gospel. So my prayer for us is that we may have the courage to tell others that God has a plan. You are included in God's plan if you submit and surrender to the Lordship of Christ. You are not included in God's plan if you don't submit to the Lordship of Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are a God with a plan. That there's no mistake in your planning. That you are sovereign. You are in control. That you use people, broken people, and you grafted us into your kingdom. I pray that we produce fruits. I pray that we would bear fruit, that others may see you, and that they would also be grafted into your kingdom. We thank you, Father, for today. I pray that this message would reach the intended target, those who are believers but are not doing anything to advance your kingdom. I pray that our hearts would be awakened, that we would go proclaim the gospel. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Pastor Gab. If you have questions, please feel free to message me or leave a message as we go through the service. I will try my best to be able to answer all the questions. I don't hold all the answers, but God does. And you can search scriptures and we can do it together. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day.